today on Rappler. Ten of the NGOs, ten of these institutes, which received a total of 2.157 billion, are presently in to Janet Bain Napoles. State auditors say Janet Napoles got 2.1 billion pesos. The Court of Appeals freezes the Nepolis' bank accounts. And in Egypt, more violence feared as Morsi supporters call for a Friday of anger. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. A report by the Commission on Audit shows pork barrel queen Janet Napoles got more than 2 billion pesos of lawmakers' funds between 2007 to 2009. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. Auditors say around 6 billion pesos went to questionable NGOs with the collusion of legislators. Carmela Fonbuena reports. Um, si, si Cardinal Tatle po ay naluha, po ay it was never a secret that the pork barrel is a source of corruption, but the details revealed by the Commission on Audit in a newly released report is so shocking it exceeds expectations. Ten of the NGOs, ten of these 82, which received a total of 2.157 billion, are presently linked to Janet Lim Napoles. And six other NGOs, uh, which received a total of 189 million in the aggregate, were found to have included legislators whose PITAF was transferred to these NGOs, o kaya isang relative nila ay incorporator ng uh, isa sa mga anim na NGOs na ito. Senators get 200 million pesos while congressmen get 70 million pesos of pork barrel every year, but 74 of them received more than their rightful share. So natin hindi lang po isang million, limang million ang dabis, no? Uh, hundreds of millions, no? At meron pong isa tayong mambabatas na tumanggap ng halos tatlong billion na alokasyon from Pita. Uh, kasama po dito sa 1.1, 1.6 billion na sinabi ko kanina, ang isang amount na 20 million from the allocation of a certain Luis Abalos. Pero sa amin pong pagsusuri ay hindi naman po siya naging mambabatas during the 13th or 14th Congress. Some funds were released for projects outside the legislative districts of sponsoring congressmen, and the list of beneficiaries are questionable. Kasi may mga, may mga listahan po na ang mga pangalan ay kinuha po sa listahan ng mga pumasa ng board, ng bar. The COA report shows that Janet Lim Napoles is not alone. It reveals a widespread pork barrel scam where lawmakers themselves, in spite of their repeated denials, have a big say, if not total control, in selecting the recipients. The releases were made essentially at the behest of the sponsoring legislators. In all of these cases, uh, almost 100 percent. This is not even the complete story. The probe only covers 2007 to 2009 and select government departments, government-owned and controlled corporations, NGOs and LGUs that were included in the probe because they received the biggest releases during those two years. It is one explosive revelation after another of how lawmakers have been abusing their pork barrel. This brings us to the question, is it time to abolish the pork barrel? The extent of the abuse is agitating Filipinos who expect to see change but fear they have not seen the worst of the pork scandal. Carmela Fonduena, Rappler, Quezon City. The Court of Appeals orders all bank accounts of Janet Lim Napoles, her family members, relatives, and staff frozen. The freeze order also covers the accounts of non-government organizations linked to the Nepolises and their staff. The court issues the order following a petition filed by the Anti-Money Laundering Council or AMLAC.
The order will be effective for six months. Levito Baligo, the counsel of Napolis' former employees, says AMLAC can request to extend the period of the freeze order if it finds more evidence. A Rappler investigation shows the Napolis family owns properties in the U.S. worth a combined 495 million pesos acquired during years when their registered businesses in the Philippines reported net profits of a little more than half a million pesos. On Friday, Justice Secretary Lila de Lima says the freeze order covers more than 400 accounts. 107 of these accounts belong to Janet Napolis. Lawyers of Janet Limnapolis asks the Court of Appeals to stop the implementation of the arrest warrant against her. On Wednesday, a Makati court ordered the arrest of Napolis and her brother, Reynaldo Lim, over charges they illegally detained whistleblower Ben Herloy. The National Bureau of Investigation urges the siblings to surrender, but Napolis lawyer Lorna Kapunan justifies her client's evasion of arrest. Kapunan says she doesn't know where Napolis is, but adds... If you were her, wouldn't you hide too? On Friday, Justice Secretary Lila de Lima says Napolis' appeal with the Court of Appeals is premature. Well, they would proceed directly to the CA. I think that's premature. Uh, any, any remedy that they would want to seek, they want to avail of, should first and foremost be addressed to the very court that issued the arrest warrant. They cannot just proceed directly to the Court of Appeals. Uh, sa tingin ko lang, uh, that should be dismissible outright for prematurity, non-exhaustion. The Bureau of Immigration says the brother of Janet Napolis tried to leave the Philippines twice in just one day in early August. Both Lim and Napolis are wanted by authorities for serious illegal detention of their cousin, Ben Herloy, the whistleblower in the multi-million peso pork barrel scam. Immigration Regulation Division Chief Danilo Almeda says Lim tried to leave for Busan, South Korea on August 2, 2013. He later tried to board a flight for Kuala Lumpur but was also blocked by immigration officials. At that time, Justice Secretary Lila de Lima issued a lookout bulletin for Lim and Napolis. Following the issuance of a warrant of arrest against the siblings, immigration officers are now on alert for the two. The Commission on Audit and employees of the National Museum want to know what happened to the 331 million peso endowment fund meant for research and development of the museum. On Friday, museum employees demand an explanation from museum officials and trustees who reportedly invested the fund in two private investment banks. They call for the resignation of officials, including National Museum Chairman Ramon Del Rosario Jr., National Museum Director Jeremy Barnes, and Assistant Director Ana Maria Teresa Labrador. State Auditor Victoria Yumang says 306 million pesos of the museum's funds were taken out of the Land Bank of the Philippines. The amounts were deposited in private banks in Makati and are authorized by Barnes. As of June 2013, the deposited amounts now total 331 million pesos. In an interview with ABS-CBN in June, Del Rosario says the endowment fund was, quote, intact. He says he authorized a transfer to private banks in good faith to make the money grow. GMA News quotes Barnes as saying he was not told it was, quote, improper for him to transfer the fund to private banks. Senate President Franklin Delon wants the Senate actively involved in the ongoing talks between the Philippines and the United States on a new agreement that will expand U.S. military presence in the Philippines. In a statement, Drilon says, The devil is in the details. I will examine the outcome of the negotiations to see to it that it will not infringe on the lives of our people and their guaranteed rights. In June, the Philippines announced plans to give the U.S. wider access to Philippine military bases in the wake of tensions between the Philippines and China over territories in the South China Sea. The agreement will allow increased presence of U.S. troops in the Philippines and boost maritime security. The Philippine and U.S. panels held their first round of talks on Wednesday. Foreign Affairs Assistant Secretary Carlos Soretta says they agreed Filipinos will have full control of military bases and that Americans cannot bring in nuclear weapons. 
The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, or CAAP, suspends the license of low-cost carrier Zest Air for safety violations. In a letter, CAAP Deputy General John Andrews says the airline's air operator certificate is suspended until the, quote, necessary corrective actions and compliance with aviation safety standards have been undertaken. Earlier this month, the airline was placed under heightened surveillance after mechanical problems forced the budget carrier to cancel several flights. Mindoro Representative Doi Liachon asks Health Secretary Enrique Ona to resign over his stand to allow stem cell products in the market, even without registration, to encourage innovation. In a phone interview Tuesday, Liachon says, People's lives are at stake here. If the advocacy of the health secretary will continue, I'm calling for his resignation. In March, ONA issued an administrative order listing the types of stem cell treatment allowed, prohibited, and restricted in accredited facilities. The FDA, though, has not yet approved any stem cell or stem cell-based products to be used in the procedure. Lea Chon says allowing facilities to perform stem cell treatments but having no approved product to administer does not make sense. On August 10, 21 medical organizations publish a statement urging practitioners not to use stem cell therapy for unproven indications and not to charge patients for the experimental drug. Egypt's Islamists call for a Friday of anger after nearly 600 people are killed in a crackdown on their Cairo, in their Cairo protest camps. The call raises fears of fresh violence after the death toll from nationwide clashes soars to 578. Police clashed with supporters of ousted Islamist President Mohamed Morsi. The interim government imposes curfews and a state of emergency in the country. World leaders criticized the bloody handling of the crisis, with the United Nations Security Council holding an emergency meeting. Governments in several European capitals summon Egyptian envoys to voice their concern, and Turkey recalls its ambassador to Cairo in protest. In Washington, U.S. President Barack Obama announces the cancellation of a joint U.S.-Egyptian military exercise. He says, while we want to sustain our relationship with Egypt, our traditional cooperation cannot continue as usual when civilians are being killed in the streets and rights are being rolled back. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number six, the United Nations sends a team to Syria to investigate claims of chemical weapons use. The UN says Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's government agreed to allow inspectors to go to three sites where the use of these weapons has been, have been reported. The UN team will try to establish whether chemical weapons were used, not who used them. The Syrian government and rebel forces accuse each other of using the weapons, but both sides deny they used it. At number eight, U.S. Army Private Bradley Manning apologizes for leaking secret intelligence files to WikiLeaks. Some consider Manning a whistleblower, but the U.S. government says he put his fellow soldiers in danger. Manning's defense team argues his superiors ignored signs of emotional distress, including his struggle with his sexual identity. As part of the trial, his lawyers release a photograph showing Manning in a blonde wig and wearing makeup. The photo was attached to an email Manning sent his therapist where he discusses his gender identity. And at number nine, Google is gearing up to become an intelligent personal assistant. The search company adds personalized voice searches that answer your questions about yourself. Ask Google to look up where you're having lunch, your hotel reservations, or flight details, and Google will pull the information from your Google accounts. The company will be rolling out the new features to users in the United States. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. You click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers the most. If you take a look, these 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. It's interesting that nine of the 10 stories all have to do with a pork barrel scam with Janet Napolis. The only story that isn't about Napolis is this one. Talks on new access deal begins. 61% angry, 28% annoyed. And here's the interesting thing. Oh, this one just popped up. 
the Lima urges siblings to surrender just became 80% happy. So this just came up on the mood navigator in the last 30 minutes. Um, there are two that are green and they both have to do with arresting Napoles. Makati court says 93% happy. The Lima urging Napoles siblings to surrender 80% happy. The rest are all bright red. Napoles' NGOs, and this is just today, got 2.1 billion pesos in pork, COA, 94% angry. That leading, that red leading to the mood of the day today, Friday, most people are angry. Well, that is Rappler Snoozecast for today, Friday, August 16th, 2013. It has been an eventful week. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.